Right, so, since we bought the two Chieftains and the 432 and everything else, we've been wanting a crane. Um, the lads at Ra Raiden, yeah, Battle Group Raiden, they had a crane, which was dead useful for loading. I was quite jealous of it. Joe was quite jealous of it. So since then, we've been looking for a crane. Now, with Crouches, who help us out with all the recoveries, Joe was over there on another job and mentioned to Dave that we were going to buy a crane. He goes, oh, I've got the thing for you guys. And he sold us a crane. Now, he dropped it off yesterday. Joe's seen it. I haven't yet. It's there. So we thought we'd film it so that you see it as I see it. And we can both get a hard on together. <laughs> it's big. Look at the size of it. No one's ever said that to me before. <laughs> but I don't know, it, it's bigger than the Centurion Bar. Hey. saying to us why don't we use the bar for shunting the chieftains about it's because until now we haven't had any recovery gear that we trusted to put between two 50 ton vehicles but look at the shaft on that we have now that isn't actually for uh, straight barring you know well no it's not do you know what that's for no. well, i only know this because dave told me when you got the jib out yeah. And you're doing a real heavy lift. Oh, you set a brace you to put, put them down as brace on those pins up there. Oh, that's why it's you can't you can't rotate at that point. There's feet somewhere for it in the other lock around the other side. And then you can do a heavy lift. So it's manual outriggers basically. You stick it on to brace the jib and yeah. support the weight. Yeah. Only when you're doing a ridiculous lift, like topple the lorry over job. Ah, we'll just topple it over. Yeah, we won't bother with them. <laughs> Dang. We've got to have someone sat in that going down the motorway at some point. <laughs> what, at 38 mile an hour or whatever, <laughs> it does flat out. I imagine this thing will be utterly terrifying at 38 miles an hour. It is big next to you, look. Well, I'm not exactly huge, but <laughs> so for people on YouTube, I'm 5'9". And I don't even come up to the top of the mud cars. <laughs> this thing is a wrench. I won't be able to get a day off it off that the plate thing. 1966, I think that is. I think we'll decode that, but I'm sure someone on the internet will tell me I'm wrong. Land Rover sign lights. Yeah. Everything has to use them. What? <laughs> Rolls Royce B81 petrol engine. Because, as we all know, big heavy recovery machinery should be petrol. Uh, the knots a good bit. Oh, she's a bit crusty. But we've loved crusty girls before. We can love them again. I'm not going to be trying antibiotics won't sort out. It's a bit dark around here, isn't it? We should uh, I can probably... see you all right. We'll go in the cab properly, isn't it? Find the keys for all these. This is where we might find some goodies. What a thing, the size of that. I don't know if you can see that with the light. We'll get some lights in. You can. Look at the size of that Turner. winch. Turner winch. 
I think, if I'm right, you can run that under the truck, front or rear, can't you? To, yeah, uh, I think so. To use it where you want, rather than having two crappy winches. Oh, it's got a land anchor as well. Yeah, sprag. I think. Look at the lights on it. I think we did a good thing. <laughs> I know the tank too, everyone gets excited over us buying battle tanks. I'm more excited about this than a battle tank. Because we can use this more. But if I want to go to McDonald's, I can't really take a chieftain. Well, I can, but I'd never be invited back again. Whereas this, you, they'd only get a bit upset. What a thing! Oh, God. So it's got the steering wheel off the Titanic. It's not as comfy as the, um, as the Rio, is it? Well, I've, I've got it in present because I, I noticed the uh, the dashboard was uh, missing the red light. Have you nicked the red light off something else? Yeah, but I may have lost it already. One minute. Oh no! Here it is. Ah, oh, commend it. Look at that. We've done its first bit of restoration. If we can get it screw on with spaghetti hands. You know what's happening to this though? One of the first jobs we need to do. What's that? Fucking massive air horn. <laughs> Probably has one on it. Yeah, but not a fucking massive. It won't one like off a ship or a train. Look at that. It's a machine. That gear, that gear bro isn't gonna be annoying at all. I think we should keep this so that we can see that left wheel. Like through the floor. I'll keep the floor up so you can get the box. Why don't you just make a perspex? Um... So you just press the clutch. Yeah, there's nothing, is there? It's just. Uh... There's no resistance at all. No, it's knackered. So I'm guessing something's come, come away somewhere. We'll get that in there. So that's why we got this cheap. Um, the clutch doesn't work. Now, a very reputable <laughs> uh, mechanic in the MOD world who's amazing and Definitely doesn't fuck up everything he touches. Supposedly fixed the clutch on this before uh, Crouch has bought it. So we're going to fix it properly and make it work because it's really well fixed at the minute given the clutch does nothing. Yeah. So we're going to fix that. Um, hopefully without spending any money on it because we have no money anymore. And um, yeah, then we can drive this thing. Long term, we probably will put a diesel in this because we want to be able to use this as a sort of workshop truck, take it on jobs if we need to, because that lifting gear is, from everyone we spoke to, that lifting gear is as good as it gets without buying brand new stuff. So we would like to uh, to make this thing actually where we can drive it down the road and it not cost everything. Because that B81 in a stalwart is about two miles to the gallon. This thing's four times heavier than a stalwart. And slower geared. And lower geared. So we're probably talking gallons per mile, which... Uh, Centurion territory. Yeah, we might as well drive the Centurion somewhere if uh, we're going to do that. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll I think, a cup of tea first and decide how we're going to attack this. And then uh, I think we're going to try and get that gearbox out and work out what's up with her. But we'll, I'll just pan over it in a minute and just show you. The sheer size of this thing is just... Just so the cab's tiny. <laughs> There's not much room in here, but the size of the actual truck itself for such a small engine is just unreal. You watch him on the barrel, uh, Adam. Watch him on the barrel. Yeah, 
So we're up on the uh, the lifting gear deck now, trying not to fall off. We're gonna go through all these uh, tubs, see if there's anything interesting. So this is the actual crane itself, so big cable drum, little cable drum for, I don't know, I'm sure someone will tell us. Swing rock. That's not smoke coming off this, by the way, that's my breath. It's bloody freezing in here. Spare wheel, don't get that on any modern HGVs. Joe's in his little crane shed. It's got a little, uh, little gauge thing that tells you when you're about to fuck something up. Well, that, that just needs disconnecting then, because that'll make you not be Precious. brave. Well, I suppose you'll be able to determine the weight by the pressure it's putting on the hydraulics. Yeah, it'll be like, that's heavy. And that's... <laughs> you're about to blow a line to stop being a dickhead. Oh, I like that little light look that lights up the controls. Yeah. Pull them on, come. It's such a nice thing. What a babe. So, we'll have a quick uh, look through all these, these bins and see what we can find. We might have some treasure. Maybe even a gold bar. So, first box. Recovery stuff, no idea what any of that is. Nothing exciting. Second box. There's some spare lights. Some bits of chain, a few other recovery bits and bobs. Might be useful. None of this is rotten actually as well, which is nice. Like the only bit of this thing that seems to have rotted is this driver's side bit of the cab has just gone. No idea why. It must have just had that bit poking out into the weather and everything else was uh, under cover. Oh, oh, nice, very nice chain. That'll come in useful. Old fashioned towing board. <laughs> Some crappy bits of string. Ooh. I'm not sure what that's something to do with the lights on the back yet. Yeah, bugger all. There's the spare, the towing board, a drop down towing arrangement, the big hook. It is a hell of a thing, this. I'll uh, spin around to the other side and we'll have a look in those, uh, those boxes. So first attempt, batteries hopefully charged. Joe sort of knows what he's doing. Fucking massive steering wheel. It's it? like a boat. Fuel pump's running. The gearbox feels very vague. It is Leyland. Let the fuel pump climb up a bit. I love this massive steering wheel. <laughs> it's just like a boat one, isn't it? Just wait, wait, just turn that wheel like you were doing. Yeah, absolutely nothing is happening down at the wheel. <laughs> so that's a good half a turn of play. Should we get a battery booster? Yeah, we'll go and get a booster. Yep, we've just lifted uh, this panel up, which is behind the crane. <laughs> Found the hydraulic pump, it's off the back of the transfer box I think that is. Look at the size of the main winch. That cable is, what, an inch and a half thick? Bloody hell. Size of the gear on it. It is a hell of a hell of a thing. We do not want to work that trap somewhere, but we shouldn't have any problem winching uh, those things anymore. We'll uh, have another quick look in these, just see what we've got in. In that. That's the old fuel pump that's been changed. One of the things that worries me with this is there's a lot of fire extinguisher holders. Well, it's, it's a Rolls Royce V80. It's almost like they're expecting it to catch fire. Ugh. 
that one doesn't want to open. So that's definitely got the uh, the treasure in it. So this is the little uh, crane operation seat. What's under there? That's all your protection. So you've got these great big hydraulic hoses here, which if one of those bursts a leak, it's going to cut your leg off. Uh, <laughs> and that bit of tin is your protection. Your controls. Even got a little light look just to, to light the controls that they thought of everything. Old fashioned uh, load indicator that's running off the hydraulic pressure. And of course, a bit of steel for safety. What a thing. Let's uh, move on. It's on the other side now. Oh, one last box to have a look in, apart from this one, I can't get it open. Trying to open these up one handed whilst uh, not falling. Ah, they have a useful blocks of wood. So yeah, we'll uh, make a start, see if we can get this clutch sorted out, but... Oh, attempt number two. Sandra... Whoa! What a thing! Don't rub it too much, that's costing a quid every time you put your foot down. That sounds well for a V80. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we have lights. Lights work. Apart from this one. Minus two. Well, I thought that was quite impressive. Uh, the exhaust needs a bit of tinkering. These big chrome tank stacks. Oh, what did it sound like from outside? Lovely. We're going to have to get out because it smells like our spits in there. <laughs> yeah, but. Bloody hell, you killed a pigeon, Joe. Oh, yeah, that, that died of uh, carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah, the fumes in this shed aren't I bad for you at all. Well, that engine revs up bloody responsive to cold. All lights, there's one light out on the front. Oh, I'll send it back then. Uh, yeah, it's no good. Just. But yeah, so next week we'll get the gearbox out and fix the clutch and hopefully take it for a drive. Right, I'll see thee. <laughs>